of India. A group of young men came to live together in a dilapidated house at Boranagore in North Calcutta. They were forsaken as some worthless, destitute boys. But they were molded by the ideas and ideals of their spiritual master, Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa. Sri Ramakrishna had passed away a few months ago. But before that, he had instilled in them the love for God, the spirit of renunciation and brotherly love. One day, at the Kashipur Garden House, Sri Ramakrishna distributed ochre robes to them and sent them out to beg food. In this way, he himself initiated them into a life of renunciation and laid the foundation of a new monastic order. The resolve of these youngsters to form a brotherhood was strengthened a couple of months later at Artpur on a Christmas Eve. In Baranagur Mat, the days were of extreme struggle and hardship. They lived on what chance brought to them. But it could not shake their resolve. Sri Ramakrishna's words constantly rang in their ears. The goal of human life is God-realization. For getting sleep, they spent the nights in spiritual practices. They immersed themselves in meditation. They studied various scriptures to quench their thirst for truth. Their love and longing for God found expression in their devotional songs. Under the able leadership of Swami Vivekananda, these young men took the vows of monasticism and started a monastic brotherhood in the name of Sri Ramakrishna. The determination of those young men has borne fruit in the form of Belur Mat. Today, Belur Mat has become the heart of the worldwide spiritual movement known as the Ramakrishna movement. Once Swami Vivekananda uttered these prophetic words about Belurmat, the blazing light of universal harmony that will emanate from here will flood the whole world. The middle of the 19th century. India had been occupied by foreign powers for a long time. 
Indian culture and its values had got concealed under layers of ignorance. The West, however, saw rapid progress in the fields of science and technology, spearheaded by the Industrial Revolution. Discord prevailed among the followers of different faiths. The scientific spirit of inquiry shook religion and spirituality to their roots. The time was right for somebody to experimentally verify the fundamentals of spirituality and establish the very essential harmony of all religions. Sri Ramakrishna was born on the 18th of February 1836 in the village of Kamarpukur, about 60 miles from Calcutta. He had a spiritual disposition from his childhood and was disinclined towards formal education and worldly affairs right from his early days. In his youth, he was appointed a priest in Kali Temple at Dakshineshwar. God is worshipped here as the Divine Mother. Sri Ramakrishna developed a deep devotion towards her. His intense longing culminated in the vision of the Divine Mother. Sri Sarada Devi, popularly known as Holy Mother, was the spiritual consort of Sri Ramakrishna. She was born on 22nd of December, 1853, in Joyrambati, a village in West Bengal. In due time, after her marriage with Sri Ramakrishna, she stayed with him in Dakshineshwar and served him as a devoted wife. They lived immaculately pure lives and their relationship was entirely spiritual. She is regarded as the first disciple of Sri Ramakrishna. Once, Sri Ramakrishna ritually worshipped Sarada Devi as the Divine Mother and thus awakened universal motherhood in her. Sri Ramakrishna's strong inner urge impelled him to follow various spiritual disciplines described in Hindu scriptures and realize God through them. He followed the paths of Islam and Christianity and attained the highest realization through each of them. His spiritual practices led him to realize oneness with God. He then habitually lived in an exalted state of consciousness in which he saw God in all beings. Sri Ramakrishna expressed the quintessence of the realizations of his 12 year long spiritual practices in a simple dictum, Jotomot Totopot. As many faiths, so many paths. As bees swarm around a fully blossomed flower, devotees now started coming to Sri Ramakrishna in Dakshineshwar. Sri Ramakrishna 
There was another group of young boys who later became monks. The foremost among these young disciples was Swami Vivekananda. Narendranath Datta, who was later on known as Swami Vivekananda, was born in Calcutta in 1863. Swami Vivekananda was a prodigy endowed with many talents. He had acquired a vast knowledge of different subjects, including Indian and Western philosophy and history. At the threshold of youth, Vivekananda passed through a period of spiritual crisis. He was assailed by doubts about the existence of God. It was then that he first heard about Sri Ramakrishna. One day, Vivekananda's quest for truth brought him to the doorstep of Sri Ramakrishna. He asked Sri Ramakrishna straight away, Sir, have you seen God? The reply was, Yes, just like I see you, only more intensely. Under the loving guidance of his master, Vivekananda blossomed into a spiritual luminary. Thus began the pure, unselfish, guru-disciple relationship between them. In 1886, Sri Ramakrishna passed away leaving his disciples in deep distress. Swami Vivekananda took up the responsibility of guiding his brother disciples. A dilapidated house in Boranagur was rented. This house became the first address of the monastic brotherhood known as Ramakrishna Mutt. There were 16 monastic disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. The monastic tradition started by them combines some of the best elements of the Eastern and Western monasticism. Its emphasis on service, universal and modern outlook, synthesis of yogas, harmony of religions and such other features make this tradition a distinctive one. The Ramakrishna Mutt was established but Vivekananda's mission was not complete. He heard the inner call for a greater mission in his life. After staying in Boranagur Monastery for about two years, he set out on a long journey as a mendicant monk for the exploration and discovery of real India. During his travels, he was deeply moved to see the appalling poverty and backwardness of the masses of India. It was clear to him that the real cause of India's downfall was the neglect of the masses. After traveling through the length and breadth of India, one day, Swami Vivekananda found himself on the southernmost tip of the country at Kanyakumari. 
Here, he meditated for three days and nights, and the complete picture of his future mission unfolded before him. Vivekananda realized that cultural exchange between the East and the West was vitally necessary. India will gift her spiritual wealth to the West, and in exchange, the West will share the knowledge of science and technology with India. Taking the Parliament of Religions as a God-given opportunity, he decided to sail to America in 1893. His speeches at the World Parliament of Religions in Chicago made him famous as an orator by divine right and a messenger of Indian wisdom to the Western world. My ideal indeed can be put into a few words and that is to preach unto mankind their divinity and how to make it manifest in every moment of life. Swami Vivekananda spent nearly three years in USA and England spreading the spiritual wisdom of ancient India. In 1897, Swami Vivekananda returned to India. In response to the enthusiastic welcome that he received everywhere, he delivered a series of lectures in different parts of India which created a great stir all over the country. Swami Vivekananda wanted to channelize this enthusiasm. He expressed, My whole ambition in life is to set in motion a machinery which will bring noble ideas to the door of everybody. On 1st May 1897, the Ramakrishna mission was founded by Swami Vivekananda. Vivekananda also envisioned to have a separate women's monastic order with Holy Mother Sarada Devi as its ideal and inspiration. His wish for a separate women's monastic order came to be fulfilled nearly half a century later with the foundation of Sarada Mat and Ramakrishna Sarada Mission at Dakshineshwar. The Ramakrishna Mat shifted from Boranago to Alambazar in North Calcutta in 1892. In the year 1898, it was shifted to Nilambar Mukherjee's garden house in Belur. Belur is situated on the western bank of the holy river Ganga, diagonally opposite Dakshineshwar. It was Vivekananda's dream to have a permanent abode for the monastery and to set up a unique temple dedicated to Sri Ramakrishna from where his ideology and wisdom would continue to inspire humanity. To fulfill this dream, he acquired a plot of land at Belur. The main site was purchased on 4th of March 1898. On 27th February 1898, there was a celebration in Belur. A procession of monks and lay devotees walked to the newly acquired site. Vivekananda himself carried the urn containing the sacred relics of Sri Ramakrishna on his own shoulders. The urn was ceremonially worshipped and Vivekananda prayed to his master to sanctify the place with his hallowed presence for the good of many and the happiness of the world. During his travels in India and abroad, Swami Vivekananda had visited many important historical places. and had keenly observed various architectural symbols, icons and motives.
Swami Vivekananda shared his ideas and vision about the Ramakrishna temple with his brother monk, Swami Vigyanananda, who was a civil engineer in his pre-monastic life. Vivekananda pointed out the site for the temple and asked Vigyanananda to prepare a plan. He prepared a plan and presented it to Swami Vivekananda, who was immensely pleased. But the work could not start immediately owing to paucity of funds. Four decades later, substantial contributions came from two American admirers of the Ramakrishna movement, Miss Helen Rubel, Bhakti, and Miss Anna Vachesta, Annapurna. The construction finally began in 1935. Fourteenth of January, nineteen thirty eight. Finally, the day dawned when the temple was open to all amidst grand celebrations in which people from India and abroad took part. Swami Vigyanananda enshrined the pot containing the sacred relics of Sri Ramakrishna in the new temple. Thus, fulfilling the long cherished dream of Swami Vivekananda. More than 100 years have passed since the inception of the Ramakrishna Mutt and Ramakrishna Mission. During this time, the organization has spread in many parts of India and several countries abroad. Sprawling over more than 40 acres of land on the western bank of the Holy Ganga, Belur Mutt is an hour's drive from Kolkata. This is a place of pilgrimage for people from all over the world, professing different religious faiths. The archway at the entrance of the campus from Grand Trunk Road displays the harmony of religions. The asphalted road leading to the shrine is lined with trees on both sides. The lush green campus is a unique combination of serenity and sanctity. Swami Vivekananda envisioned the Ramakrishna temple as a unique monument symbolizing the harmony of religions and harmony of cultures. The architecture incorporates features of a temple, a mosque, a church and a Buddhist monastery. The temple itself is built in light buff sandstone, which is found in the temples of Khajuraho and the palaces of Rajasthan. The facade or the front portion reminds one of the Gopurams majestic towers of South Indian temples. Above the main entrance is an exquisite carving of the emblem of the Ramakrishna order designed by Swami Vivekananda himself. The wavy waters in the emblem are symbolic of karma or selfless work, the lotus of bhakti or devotion and the rising sun of jnana or knowledge. The encircling serpent represents yoga while the swan stands for Paramatman or Supreme Self. The ideal of the emblem is that by the union of selfless work, devotion, knowledge and yoga, the vision of the Supreme Self is obtained. Above the horseshoe arch encircling this emblem is a replica of a Shiva Linga and on the two sides of the base of this arch are auspicious symbols of elephants with lotuses. The scroll endings above the double pillars at the two sides of the main entrance are similar to those in the Sanchi Stupa, conveying Buddhist influence. The three umbrella-like domes on the top are built in Rajput and Mughal styles.
The curvatures of the roofs resemble the thatched roofs of the village huts of Bengal, depicting the birthplace of Sri Ramakrishna. The windows, the balconies and the domes above the entrance gate are of old Mughal and Rajput fort style. The horseshoe arch and the large main arch of the main entrance have Buddhist influences. These are derived from the entrance of Ajanta's Buddhist caves and have a Gothic curve. As one walks through the main entrance, the eyes move down the row of columns on both sides to the deity sitting at the meeting point of parallel lines. The spacious prayer hall is distributed in three parts like the Christian church. The arched ceiling and pillars are all reminiscent of the Buddhist caves in Chaitya Hall of Nasik Pandulena. The richly ornamented capital of the long row of single and double pillars reminds one of the Orissa style. The beam above is supported by decorative brackets like in South Indian temples. The projected balcony supported from the beams by brackets is similar to those at the palace at Fatehpur Sikri. The sanctum attached to the prayer hall reminds us of churches, especially the plan of St. Peter's Church in Rome. The connected sanctum and prayer hall is uncommon in traditional Indian temple architecture. Inside the sanctum is the marble statue of Sri Ramakrishna sitting in meditation on a full bloomed lotus sculptured by the eminent Gopeshwar Pal. The rectangular altar below is designed by renowned artist Nandalal Bose. The front, left and right sides of the altar have swans engraved on them. The swan represents the Supreme Self. The circumambulation path outside the sanctum is highlighted by the statues of the nine planetary deities resembling ancient temple motives. Sun, Jupiter and Mars on the northern side Moon, Venus and Mercury on the eastern side, Saturn, Rahu and Ketu on the western side. The roof of the temple is surmounted by a beautiful pyramidal composition of domes and pavilions. The curves of pavilions are similar to the Bengal temple roofs. The central dome is similar to the dome at St. Maria del Flore in Florence. The golden kalasha or holy pot considered to be an auspicious object is placed on the top of the central dome. The side entrance gates resemble the elephant gateway of the Maan Mandir at Gwalior Fort. A 
atop the side entrance gates are the images of Ganesha and Hanuman, the Hindu protector deities. The speciality of the Ramakrishna temple is its ethereal beauty and its balance in architecture. Behind the Ramakrishna temple is the Mott complex. This complex includes two of the earliest buildings. The Mutt office looks after worship in the temples, festivals, maintenance of the premises and distribution of sacramental food. Right in front of this complex is a courtyard. Once, after meditating in the shrine, Swami Vivekananda walked back and forth in this courtyard and whispered loud enough to be heard. If there were another Vivekananda, he would have understood what Vivekananda has done. And yet, how many Vivekanandas shall be born in time? In the eastern end of the courtyard is a mango tree that has existed from the time the land was purchased. This was one of Swami Vivekananda's favorite spots. This tree came to be known as Swamiji's mango tree. On the northern side of the mango tree are steps leading to the old shrine upstairs. In the early hours of the morning, the prayer would begin here with the sound of the conch shell. The monks and devotees would gather here every day to attend the Mangala Arati of Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna was worshipped in this shrine till the inauguration of the new temple in 1938. The picture of Sri Ramakrishna was placed here later on. The room on the right was originally maintained as Sri Ramakrishna's bedroom. In this room, Swami Vivekananda entered into deep meditation for three hours on the day he passed away. Things used by Swami Shivananda were placed here after the new temple was built. Swami Shivananda was the second president of the Ramakrishna order. On the southern side of this room is a veranda. Once Swami Vivekananda in a highly awakened state of consciousness was seen pacing the stretch of the veranda. He was like a valorous soul guarding Sri Ramakrishna. Outside the shrine, on the landing of the staircase, a small wooden lattice leads to a terrace. Swami Vivekananda used to visit the shrine through this terrace. The building adjacent to the old shrine is replete with sacred memories of almost all the monastic disciples of Sri Ramakrishna who lived here.
Swami Vivekananda lived on the first floor of this building. Objects and articles used by him at different places have been collected and preserved here. On 4th of July 1902, Swami Vivekananda passed away in this room. He had once told one of his brother disciples that he would remain in this room in subtle body even after his passing away. Coming down the stairs from Vivekananda's room, a pathway runs parallel to the Ganga towards the other temples. The holy feet of Swami Vivekananda and also of other great souls from around the world have trodden this path. Holy Mother visited the Mutt grounds in 1898 when Vivekananda collected the dust of her feet and enshrined it in the shrine for worship. Adjacent to the pathway are two big trees, Nagalingam and Bangshi Bhatt. They were planted and nurtured under the supervision of Swami Brahmananda, the first president of the Ramakrishna order. The Brahmananda temple stands on the spot where his body was cremated. Swami Brahmananda, who was a spiritual dynamo, guided the Ramakrishna order for more than 20 years. Inside the temple is a marble image of Swami Brahmananda. A small image of child Krishna is placed in front of the statue. Sri Ramakrishna had, at the very first sight, recognized Brahmananda as a playmate of Sri Krishna in Vrindavan. On the top of the temple domes are chakras or wheels, symbolizing Vishnu's weapon. The Holy Mother Temple faces the Ganga, the river she adored. The temple stands on the spot where her body was cremated. Swami Vivekananda believed that with the advent of Holy Mother, the regeneration of the wonderful spiritual energy in modern times had begun. Inside the temple, to the right side of the Holy Mother's photo, is a small picture of Ramakrishna and to her left is a small Shivalinga. A stone figurine of the Divine Mother Durga is placed in a niche above the door. The Holy Mother's last message was, if you want peace of mind, do not find fault with others. To the south of the Holy Mother's shrine, midway to Vivekananda's temple, stand three trees that are more than a hundred years old. Swami Vivekananda's temple is a two-storied structure. Upstairs is a shrine in which an alabaster om is installed. On the ground floor is a marble relief of Swami Vivekananda. Vivekananda Suraye 
The apex of the temple is adorned with a trident. The temple is built on the spot where his body was consigned to flames. This place was chosen by Swami Vivekananda himself a few days before his passing away. It may be that I shall find it good to get outside my body, to cast it off like a disused garment, but I shall not cease to work. I shall inspire men everywhere until the whole world shall know that it is one with God. To the south of Swami Vivekananda's temple is Samadhi enclosure. This cremation ground is marked by a memorial stone with the names of seven monastic disciples of Sri Ramakrishna, whose mortal remains were consigned to flames here. By the side of this enclosure is a cremation spot for the monks of the order. A few feet away from the Samadhi enclosure stands the residence of the president of the Ramakrishna order. Every corner of the sprawling campus at Belur Mutt is steeped in history that is embodied in its many monuments. Further down south is situated Nilambar Babu's garden house or the old mutt as it is known now. This was home to the Ramakrishna monastery before it was shifted to the present site. This house is associated with sacred memories of the disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. Holy Mother liked the serene atmosphere of this place. She used to sit on the steps and admire the beauty of the Ganga flowing by. Holy Mother stayed here several times. The room where she stayed is now maintained as a shrine. 1893 Summer Holy Mother performed the Panchatapa for seven days on the terrace of this building. Panchatapa is an austere spiritual practice in which one has to meditate surrounded by burning fire on four sides and the sun above. In this old mutt, Swami Vivekananda composed Khandano Bhavo Bandhano, the Arti song sung during Vesper services in the Ramakrishna order. He also wrote the hymns on Ramakrishna, Om Rim Ritam and Achandala Pratihatarayo. The monastery was situated here from 1898 to 1899. The holy Ganga binds in its flow the spiritual regeneration of humanity that evolves from both its banks in the forms of Dakshineshwar and Kashipur in the east and Belur Mutt in the west. The Holy Ganga has witnessed many an ethereal occurrence in Belur Mutt. Once, Swami Brahmananda had a vision of Goddess Durga approaching Belur Mutt from Dakshineshwar. Swami Vivekananda also had a vision of Goddess Durga being worshipped in image form within the Mutt premises. It was decided at once to conduct the puja. Ever since then, Durga Puja has been celebrated here in the name of the Holy Mother. Apart from Durga Puja, 
लक्ष्मी पूजा सरस्वती पूजा काली पूजा एंड शिवरात्रि आर सेलिब्रेटेड हियर Birthdays of Sri Ramakrishna Sarada Devi Swami Vivekananda and all other monastic disciples of Sri Ramakrishna are also celebrated The celebrations include special worship devotional singing and discourses National Youth Day of India is observed on 12th January. Swami Vivekananda's date of birth. Ram Naam is sung on every Ekadashi day. The 11th day of each lunar fortnight. Besides the birthdays of Rama, Krishna, Buddha, Chaitanya and Christ are also celebrated in Belur Math. Once in a divine ecstasy, Rama Krishna uttered Service to man is service to God. Vivekananda expounded, "You may invent an image through which to worship God, but a better image already exists: the living man. You may build a temple in which to worship God, and that may be good, but a better one, a much higher one, already exists: the human body." 1897 just 2 weeks after the inception of ramakrishna mission bengal was in the grip of famine swami akhandananda organized the first relief camp at murshidabad this organized relief made a significant mark in the history of ramakrishna mission for more than 100 years ramakrishna math and ramakrishna mission have been conducting various relief activities without any distinction and have enlightened the world to show an extraordinary ritual of worship ramakrishna math and ramakrishna mission run hospitals dispensaries and mobile medical units in various cities towns and even in several remote villages Millions of people are benefited by this service every year. This twin organization is also involved in imparting education through formal and non-formal centers, development of rural and tribal areas. The organization also engages in disseminating spiritual and cultural values through publication of books and journals, conducting spiritual retreats and counseling. The multifarious activities of the twin organization are coordinated and supervised from the headquarters. After entering the main gate while walking towards the Ramakrishna temple, the headquarters of the Ramakrishna Math and Ramakrishna Mission is situated on the right side of the asphalted road. Besides, the Belur Math campus also houses a charitable dispensary. Palli Mangal showroom Veda Vidyale Seminary the probationers training center for novices In this training center the novices are put into touch with the traditions of the order along with systematic instructions 
in the scriptures and philosophy. The journey to Belur Mat is incomplete without visiting the Ramakrishna Museum, just opposite to the headquarters building. Memories of the great persons connected with the origin and development of Ramakrishna movement are preserved here. The museum has on display some articles and artifacts used by Sri Ramakrishna. Holy Mother Swami Vivekananda and other monastic and lay disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. As we witness the exhibits, the history of the Ramakrishna movement and its uniqueness in religious history unfolds before us. The sun is setting in the lap of the western sky. Every devout mind seeks the soothing confines of the prayer hall. That enchanting melody of the evening prayer unfurls a wave of devotion. In the spiritual domain sits Sri Ramakrishna bestowing His grace upon all. In conclusion, we recall Swami Vivekananda's prophetic words again. The blazing light of universal harmony that will emanate from here will flood the whole world. Yeah.